Tomitomo News presents Privacy. Police use radars to see inside homes. At least 50 U.S. law enforcement agencies are now equipped with a radar device that allows them to detect human movement through the walls of houses. The device, known as Range R, operates as a highly sensitive Doppler motion detector. It can detect human movement from a distance of up to 50 feet. The device beams radar waves through a wall and calculates the distance of the target by analyzing reflected waves. The device has a 160-degree conical field of view and can detect movements as slight as human breathing. It works through brick as well as concrete, but cannot penetrate metal. Use of technology raises both legal and privacy issues, and a 2001 U.S. Supreme Court ruling barred authorities from using high-tech sensors to scan inside someone's home without first obtaining a search warrant. How to protect your personal data at the U.S. border. Business people and journalists have long been paranoid about protecting their personal data when visiting countries like China and Russia. But now, travelers to the United States are also reporting increasingly invasive behavior by the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Agency. In one recently publicized case, a Canadian man missed his flight to the U.S. while a Customs and Border Protection officer used his passwords to access profiles on a gay hookup app and website. To secure your data at the U.S. border, notify a loved one or your attorney before passing through a checkpoint and again after you have passed through. If you are detained and have your devices confiscated, you may not be able to alert anyone. Turn off your device's fingerprint unlocking function, as visitors such as green card holders may be required to provide fingerprints. Encrypt your devices with a strong password and use a strong PIN, and turn all devices off, because some encryption tools only work properly if a device has been powered down. Prepare a spare phone and laptop computer that you only use when you travel. Link these devices to secondary accounts with their own unique usernames and passwords that you only use for travel. Do not link them to your main accounts. Wipe your devices before you leave home and delete any sensitive apps. For extra protection, make sure that even you cannot access your device while passing through U.S. border control. Set up two-factor authentication on your device, but keep your SIM card at home, destroy it, or mail it to your destination. That way, even if you're forced to divulge your PIN, you won't be able to unlock your device. One caveat, taking any of the above measures may arouse suspicion and lead to a longer detention or denial of entry if you are not a citizen. Unfortunately, there isn't much you can do to protect your Facebook or other social media accounts. A fake account might fool an individual officer, but experts strongly advise against doing anything that could be construed as lying to a government agent. An optical illusion to protect your PIN number. A technology developed by researchers at New York University could defeat shoulder surfing attacks with a display of an optical illusion. A shoulder surfing attack is when an attacker obtains a person's PIN number by directly looking over their shoulder or by recording the process. The illusion PIN system generates an on-screen keypad with number keys in a certain configuration for the intended user. However, someone viewing the same screen from a distance will see a completely different configuration of number keys. For added security, the system generates different keypad configurations for the intended user every time they log in. An NYU study revealed about 73% of mobile device users surveyed admitted that they had observed someone else's PIN, although not always with malicious intent. Meanwhile, the majority of victims said they were not aware they were being watched. Shoppers beware! Google is tracking you offline too. A new Google tracking program that links shoppers' offline purchases to their web activity is drawing concerns over privacy and data security and has prompted one privacy watchdog to file a federal complaint. With its store sales measurement program, Google claims it can now prove online ads lead directly to in-store purchases. The company used third-party partnerships to obtain access to the debit and credit card records of 70% of American consumers. The transaction data is encrypted and made anonymous using an algorithm that then matches it to users on Google and other Google-owned services. 
The tech giant did not disclose the formula it uses to supposedly protect consumer data, but insists the information remains safe and private and that advertisers receive only aggregated information. Google claims users can opt out easily by unchecking certain settings, but these settings are confusing and vague, according to the privacy rights group that wants the program investigated. Critics also worry that Google is putting consumers at risk, since even with encryption, the data could be hacked or breached. California approves bill banning drones below 350 feet. Are drones an invasion of privacy? California lawmakers sure think so. They just approved a measure to regulate the use of drones over private property. California approved on Monday a bill that would ban drones flying lower than 350 feet over private property without express permission. The FAA allows the flight of small aircrafts below 400 feet. The new measure will force people to fly their drones above 350 feet, but below 400 feet, leaving only 50 feet of margin. The measure doesn't apply to law enforcement or governmental agencies. The bill defines unmanned aircraft as those operated without direct human intervention from within or on the aircraft. The author of the bill believes people shouldn't need to worry about drones flying above their property invading their privacy. Opponents say the bill could stifle innovation, arguing it doesn't differentiate between hobbyists and commercial drone users. Tech giants also have big plans for commercial drone use. Google X has launched Project Wing to compete with Amazon's Prime Air project. Anti-drone system protects against spying. A Singaporean company has designed a system that can help protect against the unwanted intrusion of drones fitted with cameras. SkyDroner is an anti-drone surveillance system that can detect drones up to a kilometer away. It has multiple sensors that allow it to reveal information about a nearby drone, such as its model. It can also interfere with the drone's radio frequencies and even take over control, such as by sending it back to its operator or forcing it to land at a designated location. The system is being marketed to police departments, defense departments, and airports. Hong Kong freedom lovers alarmed at growing government requests for internet data. Despite promises of non-interference, Beijing has cast a large shadow over Hong Kong since it returned to the loving embrace of the motherland in 1997. Less noticed, however, is China's slow boa constrictor-like strangling of Hong Kong's internet freedom. And one rather famous company that once promised to do no evil may not be living up to its principles. China is famous for its supercharged censorship that has been highly successful in bullying internet companies into obeying their edicts if they want to operate in China. But under the one country, two systems formula, Hong Kong was guaranteed the right to certain freedoms. As with every other Beijing promise, however, it seems these guarantees come with certain socialist characteristics. A recent report claims in the first six months of the year, Hong Kong authorities made some 370 information requests to Google, half the number from Japan and second only to authoritarian Singapore. Don't get us wrong, we fully support internet companies cooperating with governments to track down creeps or criminals, but the fact that data requests have increased significantly couldn't have anything to do with mounting protests and dissatisfaction with Beijing's rule, could it? A word to the wise, Hong Kong's people have given you their trust, Google. Don't betray it by tripping down that slippery slope. Privacy? What privacy? A Georgetown Law Report has found that a biometric exit program for airline passengers is improperly gathering data on Americans and violating their privacy. The Department of Homeland Security has installed facial scanners in nine international airports across the U.S. as part of their biometric exit program. The program is part of efforts to nab travelers who are overstaying their visas or using fraudulent documents. Passengers' faces are scanned at the boarding gate and matched to a DHS database for verification. Face scans are mandatory for foreign nationals, but U.S. citizens on international flights can opt out and have their documents manually checked. It's unclear, though, if American passengers are being informed of this option. According to Homeland Security's own data, 1 in 25 travelers are erroneously rejected by the system despite using valid credentials. The technology also reportedly had high error rates and often inaccurately identified women and African Americans. 